Hey guys, it's me, Priscilla, I release the Crafton. Welcome back for another episode of StoryCraft. If you're just joining us today, StoryCraft is a crafting series where I craft and tell you a story that's either a myth, a fable, a folktale, um, or whatever the heck I feel like. <laughs> and it's my version of the story, and I'm going to tell it to you here. And I... I'm always taking requests, so if you have a request for a story you would like to hear in this series, please leave it in the comments below. But let's get into it, because today, I have a doozy for you, because you guys, I I've already told this story before. Um, actually, I told it like a couple weeks ago when I was being super productive and getting a bunch of stuff ready in advance, so I could like have all this content to share. And then, because I am the biggest dumb person to ever dumb sometimes uh i deleted it in my like i need to clear out space on my phone for more content um you know like midnight ramble and now i have to tell you the story again so you might be thinking priscilla what does that mean um if you have to tell the story twice is it still gonna be good yeah i'm pretty sure it's still gonna be good don't even worry about it um but uh, what you're getting now is a more refined version because you see the story that I'm telling you, um, I should say is, uh, technically called the 12 dancing princesses. I'm going to call it the slipper shredding princesses. Cause I think that sounds metal. Um, and I really like it. I like it better. Um, plus it's the only way I remember this story. So Slipper Shredding Princesses. This is a story I'm telling you. There is a written version in the Grimm's Fairy Tale book. Um, but it's like super popular all throughout Europe. And I found a bunch of different versions of the story. Why is that relevant, you ask? Well, because in my original version, I tried to tell one narrative and then kept adding in little bits and pieces from the other one. And I had to go back and like retcon a little bit to make it kind of fit together. I don't have to do that now. It's cohesive. I mashed all those versions into my ultimate version of this story, and that's what I'm going to share with you guys today. So, buckle up, because this is going to be great. So, like I said, this is a story that comes from, like, all over Europe. I found a bunch of different versions online, um, but I first heard this story on a channel here on YouTube called Hungarian Folktales. So, definitely check it out. It's a really cute channel. I think I've mentioned it before. I love it. Absolutely love it. It has cute little animations to go with every folktale. It's a treat. Definitely a good way to, like, pass the time. Makes excellent background, like, noise. So, check them out, because that's where I heard this story first, and I was like... I love this story. Um, this is a lot more like pro woman than most fairy tales, but also, as you'll see, on track with where a lot of uh, feminism ends up in folk tales. So let's jump into it. In the way, way long ago, there was a king who had 12 beautiful daughters, and for some reason, he made them all sleep in the same goddamn room. Um, <laughs> and for whatever other reason, he also would send them all to bed at the same exact time and then lock them in the bedroom. So the door was locked from the outside so they couldn't get themselves out. So he would lock 12 girls of all different ages into one bedroom and be like, good night, I love you guys, you're my favorites, sweet dreams, and then leave. And, like, I, I don't even know, like, I, I want someone to call a CPS or whatever, like, the medieval ancient version was because it just doesn't seem right also you have to believe that if you get 12 sisters in one room and then just make them share the space people were there was wars happening behind that closed door like that that was not a safe space for anyone every night another battle had to have been fought because that's wild i couldn't stand being in a room with one other person all night like let alone 12 crazy um granted i am also single so maybe that's why at any rate, um, every morning, the princesses would be released from their fucking prison and, you know, allowed to go about their day, I guess, um, however freely is permitted. And the servants would always go into their room to, like, clean up, get them ready. And then they would notice that all of their shoes, all 24 shoes for all 12 princesses had been absolutely, utterly destroyed. Like, they were unusable, absolutely shredded into little tiny pieces, but 
the castle staff were like bewildered because they never heard any noise coming out of the princess's rooms. They all went to bed in their locked chamber. And um, when the girls were questioned by the king, like, what the heck? Uh, they were like, uh, we were just sleeping and we weren't doing anything. We definitely weren't dancing all night. Um, so we don't know what could possibly have happened. We we're innocent girls that you locked into one room. And I'm, I'm honestly not going to let that fact go because it's so weird to me, guys. And instead of like doing something reasonable, their father, the king, is like, I could, you guys, I could unlock the door to their room and, like, you know, occasionally check in on them. Or I could put them all in separate rooms and maybe that would stop the trouble. I do live in a castle with multiple rooms, so that's an option. Uh, but, no, you know, I have the only, the only solution I can think of to this issue because this has been happening for so long. I'm getting tired of buying new shoes every day. It's bankrupting the kingdom to keep up with the princess's shoe budget. Um, I couldn't just be like, you got to be barefoot from now on. That's also not a solution. Um, I'm going to put a, a petition out into the land that any man who can solve the mystery of what happens to my daughter's shoes in the middle of the night um can pick any of my daughters to marry and then he'll inherit the kingdom he can be the next king because that's democratic and how things normally work here um solve this riddle and become the king and um i won't look into this any further because i'm the worst parent um so that's what happens he puts out this petition and um he also decides to add a very interesting caveat to this like you're welcome to come try and uh solve this riddle and you know get fame and glory and a beautiful princess as your bride but if you fail to solve the riddle you die that's right. <laughs> if you can't figure it out, you get executed, which you would think would be like a deterrent. But I don't know if it's the beautiful princess or the kingdom or just the notoriety for figuring out this super deep in-depth mystery that is like unsolvable. Like the Sphinx's riddle has nothing on this one. Uh, but men still tried it. <laughs> they still tried and they failed. In fact, a bunch of men would come through and they would fail. And um, you would think, like, how could they possibly fail? They just have to figure out what's happening in a locked room. Not so. They get to sleep in an adjoining bedroom to the princess's room. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, if there's an adjoining bedroom, surely some of the girls could sleep in there. No, they can't. <laughs> they all have to sleep in the same goddamn room. But for some reason, there's a room attached to their bedroom that none of them are sleeping in. They weren't storing anything in. And that's where he puts these random men to just spend the night with his girls in a connecting room. Because what, what's the worst that could happen? It never happens. I'm just throwing it out there. On the Parent of the Year Awards, this king is not it. So all these men come. They fail to solve the riddle. They die. This happens. Like, live, die, repeat. Don't come for me, movie studios. I'm going to use that phrase here. And um, it happens for a while until one day this old soldier who, like, is probably only in his, like, 30s, early 40s, like, quote-unquote old, but older man who is a soldier um from another kingdom comes through the kingdom and as he's passing through he sees this old woman who's begging and he tells her i'm sorry you know grandma i have no money but i do have some food so i can share with you what i have left because that's all i have so they sit down they eat he shares all the food that he has left and while they're eating, he tells her, like, well, I don't have anything else in this world. I just gave you the last of what I had. So I think what I'm going to do is go try to solve the riddle of the dancing. Well, they're not dancing. <laughs> the riddle of the princesses and their shoes. And um, at least they're telling people they're not dancing. We'll get there. Um, and the old woman's like, well, since you've been so kind to me, um, I'm going to give you a hint. Do not drink any wine offered to you by the princesses because it'll put you to sleep. And um, also, I just happen to have this cloak of invisibility. Why don't you take it? I wasn't using it clearly. I'm just an old woman out here begging. And this cloak couldn't be possibly used for anything else like stealing the things I need to survive or, you know, could be sold for countless riches and like let me live comfortably. No, I can't do that. It 
it actually should go to you because you were nice to me and um, I have no use for it. I would rather stand out here begging. Um, there's a lot of really great big thinkers in this story. So the soldier takes the cloak, stuffs it into his pack, and then goes to the castle and tells, you know, the people there that he's there to solve uh, the mystery of what's happening to the princess's shoes. And, you know, they invite him to dinner. He gets changed, gets cleaned up. And while he's getting changed, he sticks a sponge into the high collar of his shirt so that, you know, when it comes around night and they're showing him like, this is your space, here's where you'll sleep. And the princesses are like, okay, good night, have a great night. Um, the eldest princess comes around and she's like, here, take this glass of wine to help you rest well. Thank you for coming to help us figure out what's happening to our shoes. And he's like, oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. Thank you. So he pretends to drink it, but he actually just dumps the wine into the sponge in his shirt collar, which like it had to have been the most absorbent sponge on the planet. Like I kind of want that sponge for all of my house cleaning um, because I can't even imagine <laughs> how strong this sponge would have to be to hold a goblet full of wine and not like immediately immediately bleed through all your clothes and run down your front. Um, but it works. Nobody suspects that he just dumped a bunch of wine down his shirt. And uh, he, you know, goes off to his chamber. He pretends to fall asleep. He sees uh, the light come on. It looks like a candlelight being held over him. The princesses are all confirming that he's asleep. To make sure that he's asleep, they poke him with a needle. And they just leave it there. Which, like, what if he rolls over? Ow. Um... And then they all head back to their little room. And so he throws on the cloak of invisibility, follows after them, removes the needle, I'm guessing. He doesn't just walk around with it. It's never stated in the story. Um, I mean, it comes back as being relevant, but he, no, no mention of him removing the needle. Um, so in the room, he sees that the sisters uh, go over to the oldest sister's bed. They knock on the bedpost and the bed slides aside and a trap door is revealed through the floor. And... <laughs> More impressive than the trap door is the witch who opens it up and she like beckons the princesses to join her and they come downstairs and all these princesses get single file. They follow her down into the door in the floor, which nobody knows about because apparently nobody sweeps underneath the princess's bed and they, uh, he disappears behind them before the door can be closed. And the bed slides back into place. And as they descend, they descend into this forest. And the first forest that they come across is entirely made of silver. Ground silver, branches silver, uh, freaking birds are probably silver too. Everything is silver. And the princesses walk a little bit. They stop at a well. They drink from fancy silver goblets. And then they continue on their way. And while they're walking, the youngest princess, who is unnamed, is like a little bit antsy because she keeps getting like the feeling she's being watched and she keeps thinking that she's hearing footsteps but every time she mentions like oh i'm hearing footsteps her sisters are like you dummy we're all walking of course you're hearing footsteps it's all of us so she's like oh, okay maybe you're right but as they're exiting the forest of silver the soldier breaks off a branch from one of the trees and it makes this like pretty metallic snapping sound and he uses that you know he stores that in his bag he's going to save that for his evidence later on but the youngest princess turns around she sees nothing there because remember he's invisible but now she starts to get like really upset because she's like do you guys hear that and they're like is it another sound that we're making as we're traveling through this forest and she's like it just sounds like there was a noise coming from behind us and they're like it's a forest, ya baby. So, you know, they all bully her into just shutting up about it. And they carry on. So they get their way to a forest made entirely of gold. Same thing happens. They stop at a well. They have a drink. The youngest princess feels a little bit uncomfortable. She gets bullied by her sisters into thinking she's crazy because gaslighting is uh, inherited. And they continue on. And when they exit the forest of gold, the soldier snaps another branch off and stores that in his bag. The youngest sister has her little mini panic attack. Bullied again. Live, die, repeat. They're doing it all over. Um... So the last forest they make it through is entirely made of diamond, which I can't even visualize because it looks like some futuristic hellscape to me in my brain. But this forest, entirely made of diamond, super sparkly, super pretty. They do the same thing. They make it to the well. They drink some water. They carry on. He gets a forest, uh, a little branch of diamond. So great. Great things are happening. <laughs> 
once they get done doing this like random forest journey, they get to a lake and that's where the witch leaves them. And she's like, here you are. And in front of the princesses are 12 little boats. And in each, every one of the little boats are 12 princes who are turned into devils. So I guess they're like kind of little devilish looking princes, but they're still fairly normal looking. And they're there to row the princesses across. Each princess jumps into a boat and the soldier, having to act quickly, jumps into the boat with the youngest sister and they row across the lake. And the prince that is rowing, the youngest sister is like, oh, this is this is really tough. And the youngest sister, who is so meek and mild and clearly just like really struggling with how much she's been bullied today, um, (laughs) just kind of waves it off. She's like, "Okay." (laughs) I don't know why. So weird. Um, Because she just feels so uncomfortable. And this is just another sign that something is uncomfortable and wrong. And she wanted her sisters to leave. And they didn't. They just kept insisting they had to go. So here they are. Um, So when they get across the lake, the soldier sees like the fog rolls away. And there's this beautiful castle. It's more beautiful than the castle he's currently staying in. And it's just everything is amazing. Everything is shiny, glittery, gold, new, fancy, whatever. It's super wow, right? Like amazing Things that, like, would make the millionaireest millionaires jealous and upset. This castle is it. And um, when they go inside the castle, there's this lavish party being held. And it's like a roaring, like, rager of a party. And the princesses waste no time. They get there. They take their princes. They go straight to the dance floor. And they tear it up. These girls have the time of their lives. It's like a nightclub. They're having a rager. Like, they're just really going hard and this whole time the soldier is watching them and he's like wow okay go off girls and he's just walking around the party stealing food from people's plates observing everything and he's like the food here is the best i've ever tasted the wine here is the best i've ever drinking everything here is amazing the people are beautiful like what is this place um i'll tell you my theories at the end but uh you know, he, he sees this and as he's watching the princesses dance, he realizes that the floor is like sparkling um, and it's sparkling because it is made out of these like super sharp gemstones that are like encrusted across the floor, which explains how the princesses are shredding their slippers if they're dancing on this jaggedy like razor sharp edge surface every night. And they're they're going hard like the floor isn't made of like little tiny rocks that are also knives. Um And they do. They dance pretty much all night. They get uh, let out of the castle by their princes. The princes row them back across the lake. This time, the soldier jumps into the boat with the eldest sister. And as um, her prince is complaining about how much more difficult it is to row, the eldest sister is not having any of that, like, fat shaming. So she's like, what are you talking about? Are you calling me fat? Are we about to end this right here? Because I will not be told that I am fat. You're just being lazy. And, you know, the soldier's like a little bit impressed with how strong uh, minded this princess is. But once they hit, you know, the other side of the lake, the soldier actually takes off at a run so he can make it back inside um, the castle proper uh, before the princesses make their way back. Because remember, they have to stop at every single freaking well um, to get a drink for some freaking reason. Because <laughs> the walk is so long, I guess. I don't know how long it is. It's never really explained. Um, Maybe they're delicate constitutions. I don't know. Um, But he sneaks back to the room. He makes sure that everything is just as it is when he left, including the needle. So I'm going to guess he took it out and then put it back in. He didn't just run around with it in his backside like the whole time. Um, And when the princesses return, they check in on him. He's still sleeping. The needle's still there. They take the needle and they go back to bed. And in the morning... Oh, my God, the shoes, they're all shredded. What happened? Um, And this actually goes on for the entirety of the three nights that the soldier is allotted to solve the mystery. He keeps it going because he just wants to see more of this, like, mysterious underground castle and all the sights and smells and tastes and flavors that he's never had before. Um, He could have given up his evidence and his testimony the first night, but he was like, no, I'm here for the party. I actually want to, I want to see this a little more. These girls have been doing this every night. I'm going to at least go three days. So he goes to the party three days in a row. And on the third day, the king is ready to execute him. He's furious. Like he's so frustrated with this whole situation. And as he's about to order the execution of the soldier, the soldier's like, wait a minute, 
Your Highness, Your Highness, hold on. In my bag here, you'll see that there are three branches made of silver, gold, and diamond. Also, I, I managed to snag on my last night a goblet from this uh, castle that your daughters are going to. And he proceeds to tell the king the entire story, including the journey and the princes that they're dancing with when they're down there. And the king is like shook. So he demands that his daughters all admit that they were wrong, that they were up to, like, wrongdoing, that they lied, and that they confirm the soldier's story. And immediately, the youngest princess, who, for the last three days, has been having the most anxious time of her life, because every day has felt wrong and off to her, because they've repeated the same pattern every day, and she's just been gaslit to shit by her fucking sisters. Um, she breaks down, she's crying, she's like, everything is true, we were dancing, I knew we shouldn't have, but this is what happened, and she's just having her most heartfelt confession and her dad's like okay all right and then the oldest sister who's like oh man we really should have listened um to her because one we did this to her but two like she was right so the oldest sister's like yeah it's true um but the reason the reason we were doing this is that those princes are under a spell and we had to go down there and dance with them to break their curse otherwise they're stuck as demons in that place forever and um this is either the silliest curse like you have to save us by dancing with us or or it is the worst lie ever told by anyone and i can't decide if the princes were the ones who were lying trying to get a little bit of that princess action or if this is just like one last ditch effort to like save face by the princess and be like maybe i can get my way out of this like problem by coming up with this bullshit story um either way the king is like I've heard enough. He congratulates the soldier um, for his heroism and his heroism. Oh my gosh, words are so hard, guys. For his heroism and for his wisdom in solving this mystery that has been plaguing their kingdom and his mind personally. And um, he says, you may choose any of my daughters as your bride. And when you get married, you will become next in line to inherit the throne when I die. So the kingdom will be yours. And the soldier is like, I'm not precisely a young man. And I'm actually pretty fond of your oldest daughter here. She's, she's pretty steely. She's pretty clever. I like her. I think we're going to get along great. The oldest daughter is like, alarmed because remember, this is like medieval time. So she's like, basically a spinster at her age. So she's like, you want me? <laughs> me? Okay, weird choice. Um, and then they're married on the spot. <laughs> Um, you know, the king pronounces them man and wife. They, they're like, it's done. It's a done deal. Everything's locked down. And then in the boldest, most horrifying move of the story, the king decides to execute all 10 other daughters who did not admit their wrongdoings. So the ones who did not confess to dancing with the demons, uh, they're all executed. So only the youngest gets to live. And, um, so does the eldest because she's married and she also admitted that she was wrong. Um, which like to me, if we're being for real, for real, um, he probably could have just threatened to execute his daughters in the beginning and save the lives of a bunch of random men who just wanted to marry a princess and become kings. Uh, but he didn't. <laughs> he chooses to do this now after the fact. So the soldier and his new wife, they live happily ever after. Nobody mentions the young princess. We're going to guess it she gets married off at some point maybe or she just becomes the spinster herself weighed down by the unbearable weight of her anxieties um and we never learn the fates of the 12 enchanted princes if they were really enchanted or not and that's the end of the story um happily ever after wasn't it great don't we all feel good the, the soldier got his queen and 10 girls died because he solved the mystery it's great it's um yeah, a happy ending. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's my story, guys. Um, and I know it's bonkers. It's a little bit bananas. It's a little bit wild. Um, it's a less than satisfying ending, but it was the wildest ending that I saw. And um, there are versions where, like, all the princesses live and they just get to continue being princesses with no consequences for their lying actions whatsoever not that i think there should be any consequences because it just seems like they were having a great time having girls night outs and the king was like not chill 
at all so they couldn't tell him anyways um but if we're going to go into like my thoughts and feelings on this story i really found this interesting because like they descend underneath the castle but end up in this like magical place with these forests and this lake suddenly and this huge castle and i like i for one think that they were like fucking around with the fae like i don't think they were just going to hell and dancing with demons i think these guys were fairies who were luring them down there and they were like participating in secret fairy balls and dances and um to me that makes the story even more magical like these princesses somehow managed to stumble their way into like a magical fairy party um and that's a lot cooler to me than like some versions where they they are just going to hell and they're dancing with these demons but like by choice for some reason i think they were down there to dance with hot fairy guys and um that's a canon version i'm gonna accept and um like, I I think um, maybe possibly, and this is more like a, a personal headcanon. I guess the last one was also personal headcanon. Um, I think the witch who leads them through the woods is probably also the same lady who gave the soldier the cloak. So, like, maybe she had been begging to everybody who passed through the kingdom and the soldier was the only one who, like, offered her any food. So she was like, here you go. <laughs> Here's a fairy, like, item to help you on your quest. Um, and that seems to be the most plausible, likely answer to me, to the story. And it makes it all a little bit better to me. And um, I suppose if I wasn't going for the most shocking ending, I would have gone with, like, everybody lives happily ever after. Um, and the other princesses marry their fey princes and become immortal queens of the fairy realm. But... That's a little bit too saccharine, <laughs> and I kind of like how much of a jerk the, the king dad is, not going to lie, because um, he's a big jerk, and I don't stand. I just enjoy him as a character, but yeah, let me know what you guys think um, of the story. Did you like this version? Have you heard other versions? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you would like to hear or see next time. I know um, if you have made it to the end of this video, you're probably one of the people who regularly watches this uh, segment, so I appreciate your face. And you're probably wondering what happened to uh, the Experiments in Paper series. It's not over. I just didn't have time to put that together. So I did this real quick. So there's a, a mild intermission in our Experiments with Color um, paper series. So that's coming back. Don't worry. It's coming. Um, but yeah, I appreciate your faces if you made it this far. I will catch you guys all in the next one. Until then, happy crafting. Bye.